What's up, everyone? Welcome to Clown World News. We got some clownery, some bullshit. It's your host, Towels. We're going to talk about <laughs> the most preposterous news story that has ever been reported by sources. Unnamed sources. This is what uh, Donald Trump came on during one of his press conferences and explained. You, know, you guys always name these unnamed sources. If you don't have a source for your info, it's fake news. That's the fake news. And it's a good point. It's a very good point. You could say anything you want and say sources say. You could just literally do whatever. So on Friday, the job numbers are supposed to come out. Here's the uh, the Bureau of Labor, the BLS. I forget what it's actually. Uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And it was supposed to come out on Friday. Total non-farm payroll employment rose by 1.4 million in August, and the unemployment rate fell to 8.4%. New jobs unemployment numbers point to a V-shaped recovery. This is Fox News, so you know their slan, their spin. As the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported Friday in August alone, the economy created 1.4 million jobs, the fourth best month since the government began reporting the data in 1939, and 2.5 times better than any one month under the Obama-Biden administration. This is good for Trump's campaign, real good. Now what could possibly fuck up this news that came out on Friday? Well, what if Thursday this bullshit came out? <laughs> So Thursday, The Atlantic decides to run this this hit piece. Trump, Americans who died in war are losers and suckers. The president has repeatedly disparaged the intelligence of service members and asked that wounded veterans be kept out of military parades. Multiple sources, unnamed, tell The Atlantic. So this good... This good uh, you know, info is about to come out from the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics talking about the jobs number. The economy actually isn't doing horrific like they were telling it, like the mainstream media was telling everybody it was. It was actually recovering quite well. In fact, the fourth best month in the in the history since they started calculating this in 1939 or whatever the, what was it, 1939? Yeah. But just read, read. This is ridiculous. Read. It goes on. It, it goes on. Now, Trump surrounds himself with generals in the military. He's very, very much supportive of the military. Like, that's one of his biggest base, conservative military members. And nobody really seems to hate the military more than the radical left. So this, is, this, this whole thing is just the most preposterous thing ever. Let's read it. When President Donald Trump canceled a visit to the Ayn Marne Mer American Cemetery near Paris in 2018, he blamed rain for the last-minute decision, saying that the helicopter couldn't fly and that the Secret Service wouldn't drive him there. Neither claim was true. Now remember that, because we're going to come back to that, but this isn't the, the preposterous part. Trump rejected the idea of the visit because he feared his hair would become disheveled in the rain and because he did not believe it important to honor American war dead, according to four people with first-hand knowledge of the discussion that day. Who? Who are these people? And what What gossip? It's because he feared his hair would become disheveled in the rain. Yeah, okay, you're going to lead with that one? In a conversation with senior staff members on the morning of the scheduled visit, Trump said, why should I go to that cemetery? It's filled with losers. In a separate conversation on the same trip, Trump referred to the more than 1,800 Marines who lost their lives at Bellu Wood as suckers for getting killed. Now, Donald Trump has said some crazy stuff in his day. He, he, he speaks his mind. But surely he's not that retarded. Surely he wouldn't... He, he, he has this close circle, you know, of people. And I'm sure even within then, he doesn't necessarily trust any of those people. He's learned that you can't trust people in your circles. You can't trust people that, that say that they're trustworthy. Even if he thought this shit, which is preposterous, why would he say it to them, to a, a room full of people? He wouldn't do that. <laughs> Bellow Wood is a consequential battle in American history, and the ground on which it was fought is venerated by the Marine Corps. 
America and its allies stopped the German advance towards Paris there in the spring of 1918. But Trump, on the same trip, asked aides who were the good guys in this war. He also said that he didn't understand why the United States would intervene on the side of the Allies. This is this right here is the a roundabout way of saying Donald Trump is literally Hitler. That's what they're saying. That he's like, wait, who is the good guys in this? And, and then, like this right here is to make him look stupid. Like he doesn't actually know who the good guys were in World War One or two. But then. Then they go on to say, he also said he didn't understand why the United States would intervene on the side of the Allies. So they almost, they're painting it as him saying this to say, as like tongue in cheek to say like, oh, it looks like we fought on the wrong side of the war. Like, why would Donald Trump say any of this? That is, it's, it's literally just so crazy. Trump's understanding of concepts such as patriotism, service, and sacrifice has interested me since he expressed contempt for the war record of the late Senator John McCain, who spent more than five years as a prisoner in North Vietnam, Vietnamese. He's not a war hero, Trump said in 2015 while running for the Republican nomination. I like people who weren't captured. By the way, John McCain, this guy, here he is with Abu Masa, ISIS press officer. Abu Bakr al Baghdadi. Head of ISIS, Syrian terrorist, and a Syrian emergency task force. Now here he is training rebels in Syria, training ISIS. John McCain, potentially uh, executed for war crimes. If you can look in the main channel, and I have lots of videos, unless this video is uploaded to the main channel, you can see what I talk about. McCain and the weird info that we have, the weird, his daughter talking about how you already killed him, can't kill him again that McCain was potentially executed for war crimes so yeah maybe maybe whatever but regardless regardless of that far out there theory potentially Trump saying that, that he, talking shit about John McCain is totally different than Trump saying who are the good guys in this war this whole article is just nonsense town it's just straight it's literally it, it's baffling but it's also like they, they are so desperate we must be doing well congratulations patriots and people with a head on your shoulders it seems as if we're doing well because this bullshit exists because they have to resort to coming up with this nonsense to try to get in there before so people are talking about this instead of the jobs numbers which are doing very well no we have to talk about this noise this nonsense we have to spend our our brain power defending this drivel now i don't even know how this is even legal how they're allowed to just like straight up lie like this and say like we have sources well who are your sources you can't libel and slander and say like oh well, i just won't name my sources so let's look here there are no words for how disgusting and dishonorable this is pete but a gag but a gag <laughs> If you serve or served and you support this president, know that he thinks of you the same way he thinks of all his non-wealthy supporters. Suckers. Trump, Americans who's died in war are losers and suckers. They literally are trying their hardest to appeal to people who lack either the means to look into things or the brain power, the frontal lobe, frontal cortex ability to look beyond headlines. People who are either too busy or too lazy or too dumb. And they want them to just see this. Look at all this support. Look at all this. If this guy said it and here's the article, nobody's going to read all this bullshit and have to look into it and be like, this is a bunch of nonsense. They, they're, they're just going to see this, read this, see this. Like, okay, yeah, people are saying that. Atlantic editor in chief Jeffrey Goldberg explains why he used unnamed sources in report about Trump insulting dead soldiers. They don't want to be inundated with angry treats and all the rest. <laughs> CNN, Clown News Network, Coronavirus Pandemic. I gotta remind you on the side here, we're not just gonna talk about Trump being this bad, we're gonna talk about him being this bad too. I'm gonna put it right above the debate so that you can see this as you look at this. See this and then think about who you want to vote for. They, they think this stuff through. They've had a lot of time. They don't want to be inundated with angry tweets and all the rest. No, they don't exist. And if they do exist, they're 
fucking paid. It doesn't make any sense. So here we go. Uh, Melania Trump, Michelle Obama, and Lobos all visited combat zones. So here's a video of Donald Trump makes surprise visit to, with the U.S. troops in Iraq. Overnight on Christmas Day, from Washington to Iraq on Air Force One, Trump spent about three hours on the ground in Iraq meeting with soldiers in a dining hall with Melania. On Christmas Day, he did this. This dude likes the troops. This dude is largely supported by the troops. What they want you to think is that the troops don't like Donald Trump. They, they want to convince troops that. It's, it's a demoralization campaign. So that when they try to run their stupid shitty little coup, people will actually like think, oh no, that sounds believable. Yeah, because the people don't like Trump. No, a lot of people like Trump. A lot of people. On that Atlantic story, Jeffrey Goldberg and his four sources claim Trump's helicopter flight to the U.S. French Cemetery wasn't canceled due to weather. FOIA docs prove this to be false, Freedom of Information Act. Their sources are failing basic fact checks, making them essentially worthless. So yeah, they, they had a FOIA request, and they found out that, in fact, yes, the, the tide and the weather wouldn't allow the helicopter or the Navy to take him there. Yeah, he blamed the rain for the last minute decision. Neither claim was true. You're full of shit. Here's the information. Here's the smoking gun, if you will. White House official has sent an image of redacted email apparently showing bad weather call was indeed cause of Trump not attending Einmar American Cemetery in 2018. Dan Scavino and Stephen Miller were also both there and deny Atlantic story. Atlantic not backing down despite some pretty strong on-record denials from people who were there. We stand behind our reporting. All right, said so Adrian. Adrian LaFrance. We stand behind the report time, said Adrian LaFrance, the Atlantic's executive ed editor. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, you get the idea. So basically, it's, it's a he said, she said bullshit, but the he said, he says, she said aspect of it is one side is saying, like, I won't tell you who said this, but this definitely happened. And the other side is literally doing Freedom of Information Acts and pulling out, like, official data. Here you go. Here's the proof. Oh, and these people who are willing to be named, who were there, are saying that it didn't happen. Look, John Bolin, this guy doesn't even like Trump. Says he didn't hear Trump insult fallen soldiers in France. He doesn't even like him and he said that it didn't happen. So check this out. This is These are nice little memes. They showcase it all. Is Trump campaign over? And this is in 2016. Is this the beginning of the end for Donald Trump? August 2nd. This time it really is the end for Donald Trump. Really? Is this the beginning of the end for Donald Trump? Is this the end of Donald Trump? They literally just can't get this shit out of their mouths. This is how they play their game. They just bombard you over and over and over again with what they want you to think is happening. It's, it's, a, it's an info war. It's an optic game. It's, it's literally you have to battle between what you're being told is real and what is actually real between what you're what you're being shown is happening and what is actually happening and it's an important trial for all of us because we need to get through this filter this filter of intelligence we need to be able to prove that we can figure out what the fuck is going on and make decisions accordingly we need to be able to do this so I applaud the, the mainstream media for being this ridiculous because it's a good test for all of us and at, if we can come out on the other side successful we can remove and eradicate this fucking nonsense toxic poison to our brains. The Some Shitty Online Publication. Negative article title about Trump disguised as a neutral question. Vague subtitle about how this could possibly be the end of Trump. By some... It's funny. Picture of Trump taken at a moment where he was looking down, making him look sad, ashamed, or disappointed in himself. This is the playbook. This is the blueprint. Trump reportedly angered by. Trump reportedly called. Washington Post sources say Trump wanted to. BuzzFeed sources say, citing anonymous sources. According to the Post, anonymous sources. Sources say anonymous, anonymous, anonymous sources. Trump ordered a report. Allegedly. Allegedly. This is what they do. This is their noise. This is their tactic. Don't fall for it. So, do you believe Donald Trump is literally so stupid? He doesn't know who fought on which side in world wars? He doesn't know. He had to ask his aides. Is he really that dumb? 
Or potentially, the day before a positive news report about Trump was going to come out, somebody tried to sneak in a quick one and get a little bit of a... I think that it's kind of like the Nigerian email scams, where they the reason why they use typos and stuff is because they don't want to waste their time talking with someone who's intelligent, because that person ultimately is probably not going to fall for the scam. But if you're willing to reply to an email, even if they have typos in it, you'll probably fall for the scam. So at this point, I, I, don't, I can't I can't really figure out if they, how desperate they are. It seems pretty desperate. Do they understand that, that, like, I think they're just playing it out. They're like, we've already decided we have to do the military coup option. So we're going to try to just, like, make it look as believable as possible. So we got to throw this shit out there. We got to make him look like he hates the military. The military doesn't like him. We have to do this because we're going to eventually use the military or our paramilitary to try to overthrow the U.S. government. That's what they're going to try to do. That's my theory. That's my guess. I could be wrong. Take it all with a grain of salt. November 4th is going to be crazy. They've already done war games about all this shit. And they basically say if Biden is elected through the Electoral College, then things will it'll be peaceful. It'll be a peaceful transfer of power. But if Trump wins to the Electoral College and we have to wait weeks for the mail-in voting, which we know is going to be for Biden, then they're going to have to do this crazy military coup option. And it's like, it's like why? But my theory, optimistically, is when November 4th comes in the preceding weeks, that's when the hammer drops. Because there's no longer a question. Everyone will know what the left is doing, what they wanted to do from the get-go. They'll play their final card. And whether it results in a small-scale civil war of some sort or an operation of some sort, they will. the hammer will drop. And the ha there'll no longer be optics involved because... It's crazy how the conservatives, or at least Donald Trump or whatever, they've given these people every opportunity to rise to the occasion and become better people. He's allowed the governors to make their own mistakes. They could rise up. They could ask for help. Mayor Lightfoot could, could change her, her whole slope. She could change, But they're choosing the hill to die on, and they are dying on it. They are choosing to double down on their corruption. But they have been given every chance to redeem themselves. So, what come November 4th, come the next following weeks, I believe the hammer will drop. The swamp will be drained, and at that point, it will be obvious why it needed to happen. Because they, they're, it's like if you know somebody is about to commit a crime, you can't just go like minority report, you know, thought police them and take them out before they even do it. You got to wait for that guy to draw the gun and point it at you. So we're just waiting right now for the Democrats, the radical left, cult, whatever it is, the cabal, whoever it is, to play their final hand. And when they do, hammer drops. It's hammer time. So yeah. If you enjoyed this investigative independent journalism, you check out my main channel in the description of the Patreon where I post all these videos in case it gets censored. But take care, shout out to all my patrons that do exist. You guys are awesome. I really like uh, engaging with you in conversations. You guys bring up a lot of really interesting points. The, talking about the, the etymology, like that blew my mind. That was crazy. Somebody was showing me some crazy etymology in my Patreon about the Rittenhouse case. And I love anyone who's able to look into things like that. I just feel like there's some really cool connections that you can make that might be more superfluous than like concrete, but they're still interesting to me nonetheless. So yeah, stay vigilant, be a good person, call your mom, peace.